नमस्ते वेलकम दिस इज अरुणा पत्की डॉक्टर ऑफ आयुर्वेदिक मेडिसिन एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न एंड टॉक एंड डिस्कस एंड डू टेक केयर ऑफ आवर बेसिक प्रॉब्लम ब्लड प्रेशर ब्लड प्रेशर मीन्स द सिंपल डेफिनेशन ऑफ द ब्लड प्रेशर इज that there is a pressure on the wall when the blood is flowing through it right blood pressure so when blood is flowing through the channel through the vessels which is a blood vessel that that pressure builds on the vessel it's called it as a blood pressure right so the definition is very simple to understand so most of the time um, the vessel supposed to have a normal normal pressure right because to flow for the flow from one point to the other point you need to have some good flow in the body so what happens is uh, when the blood is flowing through the vessel the pressure gets either too high or too low so when the pressure gets too high or when the blood is exerting too much pressure on the wall it is called it as a high blood pressure normal pressure is required in the body for the good flow normal pressure is supposed to be there all the time this is a regular blood pressure when this pressure goes higher that is a higher or hyper blood pressure or hyper tension and when the pressure goes less that is called it as hypo pressure or hypo tension okay so i hope you understood the logics of the blood pressure meaning and what is hyper and what is hypo hyper means excess hypo means less pressure means pressure simple let's learn so how do we know that our blood pressure is higher right most of the time um doctor uh, during our examinations doctor guides us that uh, your blood pressure is higher or lower uh, there is a instrument what we use it's called it as a bp monitor or bp reader uh, it's called it as a sphygmometer and uh, in the sphygmometer there are always two readings the top reading is called it as a systolic pressure and uh, the bottom reading is called it as a diastolic pressure the systolic pressure um, is uh, the top number and the diastolic pressure is the bottom number so generally uh, the blood supplies the uh, sorry the heart supplies uh, the blood to each and every cell in the body and offers and uh, supplies the nutrients to the to the each and every cell you know the required energy which is required on the day to day basis nutrients supply so when the 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 uh, oxygenated blood the full of prana the full of nutrients is reaching to the cell that time the heart contracts with the contraction there is a pressure build and the good blood is uh, supplied or thrown out of the heart to the every corner of the body every cell in the body and that is called it as a contracted heart pressure and supply of the oxygen it's all comes under the systolic pressure when the pressure is built on the arteries arteries are the vessels which carry the oxygenated blood to the each and every cell in the body whereas the bottom number which is a diastolic pressure is 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 uh, is a number when the the deoxygenated blood is coming 
from all over the body to the heart. So here in the diastolic pressure, the deoxygenated blood, that means which is not a pure blood, is coming to the heart and that number is uh, is known as a diastolic pressure which which is the bottom bottom number in our blood pressure reading so friends uh, once we know the systolic and diastolic pressure uh, and uh, how uh, what exactly it means i hope you understood the logics behind it now the very important thing is like um, in Ayurveda, uh, the, the hyper blood pressure or hypertension is, uh, is, a, is, a, is, is, a, is a kind of, it is a symptom rather than it is a disease. Okay, because uh, have you ever heard about this um, uh, white coat syndrome, you know, or uh, white coat uh, uh, hypertension? That means like, you know, when you go to the doctor's office and uh, we get a little bit anxiety, we get a little bit hyper uh, nervousness and uh, our uh, our blood pressure shoots up or our heartbeat um, goes faster, right? So that time uh, we are just under a kind of a circumstance of the clinic and hospital or a doctor in front that that kind of environment also can create the hypertension, right? So, uh, so uh, many times the situation can increase the blood pressure. So here it is a very good and important thing for us to understand that whether the, our blood pressure is really high. So in that case, I will uh, like, you know, when I was uh, practicing in India, we, I used to do uh, the blood pressure of the um, of our uh, we wish to check the blood pressure at least minimum three to four times before we say oh okay the blood pressure is too high or blood pressure is too low so we used to do the readings at least for three to four times or two to three days constantly and then if we see that oh really the blood pressure is higher then in that case we used to uh, uh, we used to say okay now the blood pressure in you is increased that means you are hypertensive okay so uh, and many times uh, as uh, the the root of this uh, hypertension is can be either in the as per ayurveda it can be in the kidney disease it can be in the renal disorders it can be related with some sleep related issues it can be related with some kind of taking a side effect of some of the medicine what we can we, we might be taking at that time or it can be related with you know the sometimes we have seen um uh, the increased blood pressure um, in a, uh, in thyroid disorders, you know, hyperthyroidism or hyperparathyroidism, or uh, many times uh, um, uh, it can be a congenital uh, deformity or it can be a, a renovascular kind of disorder disease where our kidney as well as our vessels they are both involved you know so uh, blood pressure can be increased in so many conditions okay so we need to figure it out uh, like uh, what is uh, the root cause of uh, having uh, the increased blood pressure okay so we need to figure it out the root cause of the blood pressure root cause of this symptom as per ayurveda So now, uh, as we know, the systolic and diastolic, um, let's learn about uh, the major artery. So the major artery, which supplies the, the supply of the good blood to the each and every cell in the body is called it as a uh, aorta right aorta and uh, this this aorta uh, gets the good good blood good quality of blood and uh, pushes it out from the left side of our heart and uh, and supplies to the uh, to the body with the force uh, with the contracting the heart whereas 
the 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 top body body part and the uh, the uh, deoxygenated or bad or impure blood comes to the uh, right side of the heart and from the bottom body part from the bottom levels of the body which is legs and uh, hips and knee and you know the lower abdominal area abdomen that that body part deoxygenated blood comes to the to the to the right side of the heart okay so the top which is head and neck and uh, the upper chest area blood which is a deoxygenated blood comes to the right side of the heart through the superior vena cava and uh, from the down side of the body comes to the inferior vena cava and comes into the right side of the body where the deoxygenated blood comes in the heart and from the left side of the body the oxygenated blood is supplied to the each and every cells in the body so uh, this is a uh, this is a basics of the heart you know just to give you a little idea about how this works you know and when uh, um, the, this is the basic function of our heart supply of the nutrients good nutrient uh, supply of the nutrients to the cells supply of the prana supply of the vital energy to the cells this is what our heart does right but when uh, when we do not eat proper food when we and now let's learn about the uh, causative factors what can be the reason so our food and our lifestyle plays a very important role creating this uh, this imbalance uh, creating this uh, what do you call it as a uh, disharmony in the heart so our food which is like a kind of a deeply fried food heavy food fatty food uh, non vegetarian food uh, full of fat food um, full of cholesterol rich food bakery products uh, cheese um, uh, full fat uh, dairy products uh, these kind of combinations of food along with a deeply fried uh, uh, all the time fried food can be can be um, one of the major contributing factor uh, along with a heavy food like heavy meat um, that can which is full of uh, you know rich of fat you know uh, and flesh can be a contributing factor of creating uh, uh, the coating inside the blood vessels okay and in ayurveda um, when uh, when um, uh, when uh, this starts accumulating in inside the vessel right inside the vessel there will be a coating right and then this condition uh, in ayurveda uh, is uh, known as uh, accumulation of uh, um, uh, uh, accumulation of ama or accumulation of meda which is a fat or cholesterol accumulation inside the vessels which will make the vessels um, uh, narrow and narrow and narrow and further narrow kind of that kind of things will start build up in i uh, in the channels in the in the vessels okay so this is called it as a the the concept of food the uh, what we, which will create the uh, the fatty accumulations inside the vessel now our lifestyle also plays very important role if we do not sleep on time if we are uh, we are not following the laws of the nature or we if we are not following uh, sleeping on time waking up on time doing your routines and if you do not have uh, your good routines of doing certain exercises just uh, doing certain um, a certain uh, uh, what do you call it as a certain uh, movements right movement is very important uh, to 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 keep the things moving in the body so your exercise uh, mindful exercise or conscious exercises are very important in ayurveda you should not be a kind of a potato couch that means eating and sitting uh, and uh, lying down the, like a kind of a sedentary lifestyle if you if you would like to know or if you would like to understand it so sedentary lifestyle can be another contributing factor of creating this uh, 
uh, high blood pressure in Ayurveda. So just to understand the simple analogy of it is like, you know, um, you know, uh, like a kind of uh, when we give the uh, uh, the analogy kind of, you know, when you are offering the uh, uh, water to the plants or when we are uh, trying to put a water on the lawn. Right. So you you generally the pipe, right, a rubber pipe. Right. So at the beginning, this rubber pipe is like a, it has a good texture, right? And it's a, it's nice and hard. Uh, it's a nice. Uh, 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 there are no cracks. There is no uh, break or there is no uh, loose. Uh, like the elasticity is maintained in the new pipe, right? And so the water flows very well when we turn on the water, and uh, and it goes. Uh, uh, uh to the when we uh, offer it to the plants and lawn the water flows very well so this is kind of a new new pipe means new life or beginning of our life at that time the things are very well uh, nicely um, uh, uh, nicely kept in our body right but when as the pipe gets older and older and if we use maybe in few months generally for our two uh, uh, rubber pipes it takes months uh, some few months or few years to break that elasticity of our um, rubber right uh, after the usage of it it becomes like old and then there will be a, uh, like softness and then maybe you will see some cracks and then you will see oh the water is coming from here here and there in the pipe itself right so the same analogy you can uh, you can use it for our uh, blood vessels in the body and what happens here is um, uh, at the beginning of our journey as a kid, as an adult, uh, maybe the mid-adult life, our whole body is good, you know. And but the, over the period of time, we have used the body. We are gone through certain ways of living that um, that that uh, that uh, that the the accumulations start building up inside the uh, vessels, and then the vessels will start kind of you know narrowing. So that narrowing will start uh, happening uh, commonly in the mid uh, around like 35, 40. Nowadays, age really doesn't matter. But still, it gets as we get a little uh, older, um, this, this is a common thing that the narrowing and the hardening of our blood vessel will start happening. And sometimes there is a possibility of uh, clogging that is in Ayurveda called it as a strota avarodha. Sturta avarodha, obstruction, obstruction in the vessels. And this is what Ayurveda sees that because of that obstruction or avarodha, uh, that means obstruction that uh, that blood vessel uh, uh, that uh, the channel that throttles uh, or that uh, vessel will get you know uh, erupted or that vessel will get break very easily and then the blood can come out or blood can ooze out very easily and that's where we see certain times this condition is called it as a hemorrhage or raktasrav in ayurveda that we will find the raktasrav uh, in the different parts of our body and that is called it as a hemorrhagic condition sometimes when it happens in the brain it's called it as a brain hemorrhage in ayurveda uh, uh, the raktasrav in the head and then uh, when we, it can and it can also happen in the um, in the different parts of the brain you know uh, sometimes it can be happening in the layers of our brain um, uh, it's called it as uh, you know the uh, the hematomas or it can also call it as a hemorrhage uh, when it forms a tumor then it becomes a hematoma in that area and when it is a hemorrhage then it is just called it as a raktasrav or a hemorrhage uh, in the brain okay so so uh, oma means hematoma, hem means blood and oma means tumor. So hem, it's kind of that kind of uh, you can, uh, relation, uh, the breakdown you can see, right? So it can happen anywhere in any part of our body and then we will have the hemorrhage or uh, in the different parts of our body, okay? So this uh, this uh, hypertension or uh, uchya rakta, uh, rakta chap in Ayurveda 
uh, is very important to 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 manage uh, it's very important to look at it to, it's very important to think about it to, it's very important to take care of it okay right so we understood uh, the 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 narrowing of the blood vessel right At, uh, atherosclerosis that means uh, then we understood um, the hemorrhage then we understood the hematomas then we understood uh, like you know when the, the artery will break down or the vessel will break down then uh, that uh, artery will not be able to supply the blood to that uh, that organ right and uh, then uh th then there will be a like a kind of you know um the the the, the uh, lack of supply of blood to the heart can be uh, can also be a kind of you know the the malnourishment to the heart or a lack of uh, uh, nourishing and a lack of uh, uh, movement of the heart and that's where the heart attack concept comes in ayurveda okay so so heart attack these are all the different uh, things uh, these are all the different ways we see see that these these are things which will come along with the hypertension if we do not manage the hypertension very well you know so in ayurveda uh, ayurveda is a science of prevention um, ayurveda is a science uh, preventative science it gives us a guideline about uh, about using and following and uh, practicing and doing something some of the basic laws of nature as per our body constitution as per our body na body's nature and these are very 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 important uh, to follow so that we will have a good and healthy and happy life and we will not go or fall to the downside of our uh, health you know we will not suffer with the diseases in the future and that's the preventative approach of ayurveda so friends i will suggest uh, um, that it is better to understand um, our our uh, uh, requ uh, requirement of the body and what is the requirement at the current uh, time and taking care of that current condition current uh, uh, current uh, problem and managing our problems very well is very nicely explained and described in ayurveda so how we can manage our blood pressure as per ayurveda okay so uh, friends in ayurveda uh, the diet is going to play very important role okay so uh, let me speak up uh, speak few points on the food okay so the food has to be light the food has to be warm the food has to be fresh and the food has to be uh, cooked okay the food has to be cooked fresh clean light healthy nutritious with nice herbs in it will be will be suggested for a good uh, for a good uh, good way of offering for the uh, hypertension now second is lifestyle so in the lifestyle you make sure that you wake up uh, on time sleep on time you have good routines of disciplined lifestyle that means you do certain things certain time and you do that uh, every day you know your routines like like our sun or like our moon right they have the routines of coming at a specific time going at a specific time right so they do have a routine uh, and that is called it as a dinacharya dina means day daily routine day routine and night routine that also comes in the dinacharya dinacharya day routines means again doing certain things right on time but sleeping is a very important factor in ayurveda that you you is sleeping is a kind of a distressor to the body 
so it helps us to calm down our excessive um our excessive pressure uh, it calms down our body so it is good for our high blood pressure to take a nice rest nice movements nice uh, exercise nice pranayama pranayama means breathing exercises uh, omkara which is a mantra chanting or omkar um, uh, chanting or mantra chanting is really good to do in a uh, in a in a in this uh, uh, practice of healing our heart okay so your diet your daily routine and you are at least 40 minutes to one hour exercise that exercise means when you are doing exercise your breath should be involved and that is what the ayurvedic exercise i will say practice of the yoga that means where you are aware of your breath and you are practicing your breath along with your movement is a key for our heart health okay so our heart health is totally 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 depend on the supply of good oxygen supply of good breath to our heart i hope you are understanding what i am trying to say here okay now so this is a dinacharya now and also understand um, the importance of water right so in Ayurveda, uh, Ayurveda says you just drink the water, how much your body requires. Okay. So if I am thirsty, I should just drink water enough, like a, uh, to pacify my thirst. I should not eat a drink like a one liter of water uh, when I wake up or I should not drink like four to three to five liters of water per day, depending upon, you know, this is, there is a fashion nowadays that we just drink water. But you know what? When the water goes in, there is a, the, the pressure goes higher, you know, uh, the, the, the pressure goes, uh, the flow, the, the movement, the volume uh, gets increased. And that's why in Ayurveda, you drink water enough not excess not under just whatever is required for your body and that is always suggested to drink um, you know, like a, you know um, in ayurveda we have a phrase it's called it as a, 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 a ambu ambu means jala and this jala means uh, definitely drink the water uh, just what, uh, what your body your body uh, needs it Now, also um, uh, in, uh, in, um, in hypertension, Ayurveda says eat less salt, you know. So salt uh, is, a, an, uh, is a thing which, which is uh, prohibited or used very less. And we, in Ayurveda, we use a Sendav Namak, uh, uh, which is called it as a, a black salt. Uh, and we, we recommend the black salt uh, um uh, for uh, for a food consumption cooking purpose okay but uh, salt is restricted or reduced in the heart conditions in ayurveda because uh, uh, salt holds the water and when the wa salt holds the water then the pressure in the body get, gets higher you know so that's why in ayurveda um, they do not recommend a lot of eating of salt. They, 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 um, we, we avoid salt for the hypertension uh, food, okay? So, water creates the indigestion. Water can reduce your agni. Water can uh, slow down your digestion. Water can uh, can disturb the jacharagni, which is a uh, which is a digestive fire at the stomach. And 
Excess water can disturb the metabolic activity in the body, which over the period of time can create the ama, and this ama, uh, this ama over the period of time can create the blocks or the blockages in the channels can also create the heart diseases or heart disorders, so, and this ama can create so many other diseases in the body. So ama is a first step of formation of the diseases in the body in Ayurveda. So that's why in Ayurveda we do not recommend excess sew drinking of water okay now also our feeding of the mind um, supposed to be uh, good and healthy and nice okay the, uh, positive thoughts always reduce the the blood pressure okay but negative thoughts uh waste thoughts or um uh, like you know uh, like uh, too much uh, uh negativity in our doings and in our thinking can also create the the blood pressure uh, higher so make sure your thinking is different your thinking is positive you are doing well you are serving others well this this all impacts on our blood pressure in the body on a very subtle level but definitely it affects the pressure in our body so everything starts from within us in ayurveda that uh, when we talk about the the disease formation then uh, the disease formation starts from inside out okay and at the same time also the healing also starts from inside out okay so uh, good food clean food positive food fresh food along with um, positive thinking positive behavior along with um, the good practices of yogasana good practices of breathing techniques good practices of mantra he mantra chanting specifically omkar uh, is uh, is recommended in ayurveda to to calm down the excessive uh, pressure uh, in the body and that means managing our hyp uh, hypertension in the body so these are all the things uh, we need to do in ayurveda along with the panchakarma uh, treatment uh, panchakarma therapies which in ayurveda are recommended so panchakarma in ayurveda is a is a is a is a set of therapies okay so in panchakarma we offer different therapies uh, which are called it as a uh, vamana virechan basti rakta moksha and nasya vamana means vomiting uh, virechan means purgation uh, basti means anima Nasya means nasal drops and rakta moksha means bloodletting. These are the different approaches uh, of cleansing the body. So for heart conditions, there uh, depending upon the body type and depending upon the, the the dosha accumulation in the body, the Ayurvedic doctor will decide what kind of panchakarma is necessary and required for our uh, client and uh, what is the best we can do so that his uh, his pressure uh, will calm down okay so um, uh, generally uh, uh, panchakarmas are done uh, as a preventative approach but at the same time panchakarmas are also done as a disease management approach so in ayurveda uh, ayurveda is a science which is a uh, not only uh, which can help us and guide us and heal us when we are deceased it is it is not meant only for the deceased people this science is meant for everyone this from the childhood from the adulthood from the teenagers from the old people it is good for all the stages of our life so this is a science which is a preventative science which is a which is a science uh, which uh, where we can it can help us to manage our health 
manage our wellness manage our health and wellness of our mind body and our soul health so now um, uh, the therapy which is a shirodhara therapy uh, which is which is a continuous flow of oil on your third eye is one of the nice therapy uh, recommended in ayurveda so you can definitely try a few sessions of the shirodhara to calm down your excessive uh, pressure uh, in the body then there is another therapy nasya uh, where we use nasya means nozzle uh, drops and here we use either ghee the cow ghee uh, uh, or we can use the the coconut oil um, like a two drops to six drops or seven drops depending upon uh, depending upon the the requirement okay but uh, as a management you can all at least try doing two drops in each nostril at the bedtime uh, once in a day or you can also do twice a day um, this kind of nozzle application and do some five minutes of massage at least to calm down uh, your nervous system in the body okay so nasya the oil application nozzle drop and shirodhara which is a third eye bliss therapy or a few of the uh, uh, secondary therapies recommend uh, sorry uh, Nasya is a one of the primary therapy and Shirodhara is a secondary therapy along with oil massages, herbal steam, marma work, chakra healing, uh, meditation, um, uh, omkara chanting, japas. All of these are the uh, healing approaches to calm down your excessive uh, hypertension from the body. Okay. So omkara, I will, I will let you know how to chant the omkara. So for this, I would like you to uh, sit properly on the ground in a cross leg posture. Support your back if needed or you can just sit next to the wall. And just inhale and exhale and focus on your heart. Focus on your heart. Your eyes are closed. And inhale and exhale. I will teach you how to do the Omkar. So you breathe in, and when you are breathing in, you are chanting the word Ah. Then we are chanting, we are holding the word, ooh. And then when we are exhaling, we are chanting or we are creating the sound of mm, um, okay? So it's ah, ooh, um. Inhale, hold, exhale. Inhale, ah, hold, ooh, exhale, mm. Okay, so I will show you how to chant this Omkara. And you can chant this for three times or 11 times or 21 times. And for good results, for sure, 21 times to 108 times. You can choose and pick certain numbers. 21, 48, or 108 are recommended for heart diseases. Okay, so let's chant this. I will chant three times, but for your practices, you can do for certain number. Inhale, hold, exhale. When you are inhaling, chant. Ah, like this. So, at the time of inhale, inhale for the count of four, 
hold for the count of four exhale for the count of four let's let's see if this will help you okay Ah. Uh, like this so when you are inhaling your stomach comes forward and you are pronouncing ah so your sound is coming from your belly okay now when you are holding your you are half closed that means it's like oh and you're feeling it into your chest area and when you are exhaling it's like closed mouth and you are holding, uh, you are exhaling with um, um, okay? Very simple. Ah, uh, u, um, ah, uh, u, um. I will show you how to do this. I hope you all can see me well. So let's begin. The window is right behind me, so let me change. Okay. You know, I like to sit in the sun, and the uh, uh, sun always makes me happy. So I am in my office today recording for all of you. Okay, I think this is a good good way you can see me. Okay. So now what I would like you to do. What did I say? Three steps, right? So inhale. When you are inhaling your belly is coming forward. You hold and exhale. Just like this. So you divide the inhale, hold, and exhale equal equal time period. Okay, equal time period. So now, what I would like you to do, you inhale. And when I'm inhaling, my whole concentration is on my belly button, my belly. And when I'm inhaling, my belly comes forward. Okay, so let's start this. Ah. Now, that was belly forward. Now, This is middle part the second part which is hold now third part is out right mm -hmm. right so inhale hold and exhale okay okay i hope you can see me now very well okay so let's begin one more time we'll practice it together and i hope you understood the wholeness of understanding the logics of hypertension and how ayurveda sees the hypertension the ayurvedic approach of it okay one more time
like that. So, uh, um, blend it all together now. Okay. Uh, One last time. Uh... Like this. Okay. So I hope you understood how to chant the Omkar, how to practice Omkar, how many times you can do it. Either you can do three times or five times or seven times or 11 times or 21 times or 48 times or 108 times. Choice is yours. Okay. So the more you practice, it's very good to feel the vibrations and energy in your heart area. And this is very going to be a very powerful healing for our management of our heart, stress management, as well as our hypertension. Okay, so let me turn off and this is what the way we practice. And let me finish the remaining part of it, continue it. So now let's talk about the herbs in Ayurveda. In Ayurveda, for hypertension, they have recommended certain herbs which can be very helpful uh, to use um, during this condition of hypertension. There are um, the the one of the favorite of Ayurveda is uh, uh, Sarpagandha, uh, which is recommended. Um, commonly for the hypertension sarpagandha so you can make the decoction out of this tea or you can make um, uh, take a kind of a one eighth teaspoon of tea powder with one cup of water you boil it very well until half cup remains and then you uh, strain it and drink it twice a day after the food is a uh, is a nice uh, uh, way of taking it uh, that is called it as a sarpagandha Sarpa Gandha. Second one in Ayurveda is Ashwagandha. So if the hypertension, uh, if there is a tension, hypertension in the body, then uh, Ashwagandha is recommended uh, uh, to reduce the tension in the body. And then Brahmi is another one good option to use. So these are certain herbs recommended for uh, um, the hypertension in the body. Along with that, in Ayurveda, uh, even if they are recommended like this, uh, this, uh, this is like a, basically uh, you need to understand your body type. You need to understand who you are. You, what is your body constitution? What is your prakriti? What is your vikruti, which is a current condition of your level of the body, the balance or imbalance status of your body um, at the present moment? And then, uh, uh, and uh, depending upon all of these factors uh, and uh, uh, f figuring it out, what is your causative factor? What is a uh, uh, what is your um, reason of uh, uh, creating this disturbance or uh, creating this vitiation in your body um, the ayurvedic doctor the ayurvedic 
uh, authentic doctor needs to understand uh, consider all these points and this is what the ayurvedic doctor will consider when he is looking at a person who is suffering with the hypertension and the, in that case as a ayurvedic panchakarma specialist i will be uh, doing the evaluation first knowing the body type prakriti the harmony in the body and the disharmony in the body which is vikruti then we will offer certain food certain variations of teas certain variations of um, the customized approach of unique approach of our panchakarmas uh, our detoxification program our rejuvenation program our stress release management program our um, all the cleansing programs through the um, through the chakra healing marma uh, vital pressure point which is a indian acupressure healing then we uh, offer the craniosacral healing lymphatic system healing we offer the marma healing we offer the uh, ayurvedic different abhyangam massages with variation of potali boluses poultices uh, oils uh, herbs herbal paste applications all the uh, and the, the third eye bliss therapy the, the the different shekas on the body the different pourings on the body different wells on the body which is called it as a bastis at the heart which is called it as a rudbasti uh, which is related with the heart area and uh, stomach area and the lower back area and spine area and the neck area so we have so many variations of therapies depending upon what is the requirement of our client so i hope um, you are understanding the logics in ayurveda and this is what the uh, uh, ayurveda uh, sees um, when a person is suffering with the uh, with the hypertension and this is called it as a uchcharakta chap uchcharakta dab and the, and many times uh, this uh, uh, concept of ayurveda uh, gives uh, importance uh, to um, to use these different herbs like a go to kola and then amla and ashwagandha sarpagandha brahmi uh, garlic arjun arjun is one of the best recommended herb for our uh, blood pressure high blood pressure and amruta which is guduchi giloy is uh, also one of the good one to enhance the uh, metabolism and to enhance the blood digestion sorry digestion in our body so that uh, which will help us to reduce the hypertension easily in the body so there are so many ways in ayurveda so the ayurvedic doctor will have this beauty of knowing what will be the good for our client for this condition which is uh, which is a kind of um, the line of treatment in ayurveda for the hypertension okay hypertension um uh and the holistic approach of uh, looking at the hypertension and uh, offering uh, the the you know the major uh, vata uh, related uh, disorder which is called it as a uh, raktagata vat rakta means blood raktagata vat means the vata is vitiated uh, uh, vitiated and uh, the 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 blood which is supplying to each and every part of the body that's where it is called it as a um, the dhamni means arteries in ayurveda and uh, the 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 excessiveness of uh, pressure or excessive pressure um, uh, which is a kind of uh, too much pressure uh, and uh, here we are talking about a uh, the van vayu vana vana is a uh, one of the subtype of vata dosha and uh, that is uh, and this uh, van vayu is uh, exerting 
a lot of pressure on our blood which is the rakta so our vena vayu and our blood blood tissue uh, blood which is rakta they both have a uh, uh, vitiation and exerting the pressure on our blood vessels and that is what the concept of pressure in ayurveda is because ayurveda um in ayurveda the heart is major um organ which is a uh, one of the marma important marma it is the one of the major marma in the body and uh, uh, this uh, heart marma or uh, this uh, heart is controlled the movement of the the plasma tissue into the blood tissue um it's 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 uh, controlled by the uh, samana vayu right because the food gets digested creates the plasma tissue and then the from the plasma tissue the blood gets formed okay so there is a vena vayu which is located into the heart and samana vayu which is uh, transforming the plasma into the blood so there is a lot of vata disharmony in ayurveda okay so systolic and diastolic pressure uh, gets disturbed because of uh, vena vayu which is located in the heart uh, which is responsible for the blood circulation and samana vayu which is a uh, which is a which is a transformation of the plasma tissue into the blood tissue so they both gets disturbed and uh, that is where the vena vayu generates the uh, the the excessive pressure on the arteries which is dhamani and dhamani's uh, uh, arteries they do dharana dharana means they they help us to supply the uh, uh, the nutrition to the, the to each and every cell in the body right and our prana vayu um prana vayu and vana vayu so prana vayu which is located into our head area uh, and our uh, each and every cell which gets the prana right but prana and vana vayu which they control the nervous uh, circulate uh, nervous system the nervous control of our circulation okay so all these uh, doshas you know uh, so the, the prana vana udana samana apana out of these the prana vana and samana these three doshas gets involved very easily and uh, whereas uh, they control the the systolic pressure in the body in ayurveda whereas our kapha dosha uh, um, controls our diastolic pressure okay kapha maintains our the structural integrity of our body organs uh, kapha uh, avalambak kapha which is a type of a subtype of the kapha uh, is uh, gives the structure to the to our heart to our blood vessels and that controls our diastolic blood pressure okay so the kapha and vata we need to understand this so, so there are so many ways in ayurveda we need to think about the doshas the 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 current condition of the doshas and how to manage them and once we do this then it is easy for us uh, to to manage the ayurvedic pathology and uh, balance out our hypertension okay so and this this hypertension in ayurveda is because of the aggravation of vata factors vata etiological factors and uh, the the disturbance between the vata 
and katha is um, is is the major one but along with that our vata as well as our pitta and kapha as well as our blood rakta and our med which is our fat right we talked about all these pathologies in this the lipid the fat the cholesterol we need to consider all the factors in ayurveda for managing and balancing our samprapti which is a pathogenesis in ayurveda uh, uh, the the pathogenesis in ayurveda so um so the 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 very important one um what we talk today this topic of hypertension um whether it is a primary hypertension that means like uh, uh whether the major heart is involved uh, in that uh, in the uh, is the real cause of the disease or the symptom whether the heart is the major uh, um, uh, contributing factor or whether the kidney and other uh, organs are the contributing factor of the hypertension that is what we need to figure it out and find it out in uh, in ayurvedic management because the principal uh, management in ayurveda uh, is very easy but we need to understand we need to figure it out and we need to see dinacharya ritucharya um the 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 lifestyle the food the tridosh balance the energy balance all this is taken care um by knowing your body type okay so you must definitely know um, the causative factors which are creating the the disharmony or hypertension in you and uh, then stop these causative factors and then follow the ayurvedic management principles and then you can manage your um, hypertension very well by doing the lifestyle modifications uh, and then if required the ayurvedic herbal applic uh, take uh, herbal uh, uh, supplements which we discussed in the in the whole session today so now i would like you to take a moment here So, hypertension in Ayurveda is not a disease. Hypertension in Ayurveda is an is a is a symptom. Prasaravastha. That means the 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 imbalance doshas along with the blood circulate all over the body until they create the block or until they create the channel lock the obstruction until they create the curve vaigunya and when they create the curve vaigunya or the block they can create the impact on the brain or heart or blood vessels or eyes or our kidneys or they can create the disharmony in the weaker part of our body that is why hypertension in ayurveda is a psychosomatic hemodynamic condition because it is related with vata pradhana tridosh 
which is creating the disharmony in a plasma and blood tissue along with dushas like the whole body and our mind so our mind our body are also getting disturbed in hypertension that is why hypertension is a psychosomatic disorder it is a psychosomatic condition where our vata which is a primary tridosha is vitiated which affects on our plasma tissue and blood tissue as a dushas or channels and it travels throughout the body sarva sharira means whole body as well as our mind as these are the sites whole body and mind are the sites that is where hypertension is a psychosomatic hemodynamic condition raktagatavat raktagatavat that means rakta means blood blood vessels blood which is traveling through the blood vessels that is a rakta gata vata means vayu vayu means vata so this is a hypertension rakta gata vata in ayurvedic perspective i hope you understood the wholeness of hypertension and the light as per ayurveda namaste ho oh, my whole concept of teaching and guiding the ayurvedic approach for hypertension will help you to manage and understand this disease very well so that you will help yourself to take care of healing and management in ayurveda thank you once again this is aruna patki doctor of ayurvedic medicine guiding you all today about hypertension raktagatavat in ayurveda thank you